Christian, from more yep. of a large corporation point of view, what are, the, are uh, some experiences to use in terms of cooperation? In oh yeah, I, I, we believe strongly in that. Uh, in order to solve some of those things that we are set up to, to look at, we need more system thinking, which means we need more cooperation across sectors. Uh, we can't solve the problem looking just at water if we don't look at energy. We can't look at housing if we don't look at transport. Uh, transport companies have to think about how buildings are, etc., etc. Just an example, if a Chinese moves from the rural areas into the cities, his energy consumption goes up 10 times, which an Indian goes about 14 times. But if an American moves from the suburban or urban areas, uh, suburban or the uh, uh, rural areas into the city, his energy consumption goes down with 75%. So, so the differences here on, on, uh, on the, the situation are very different. So uh, I believe that if you, I was an inter, uh, entrepreneur looking into the future, I think that would be many new bigger projects that would be started where everyone has to chip in together. And uh, so if you're an entrepreneur, you have to sign up for this. You have to be up, out there uh, and get your share uh, because there needs to be this collective thinking. Integrated planning. I mean, I, I was in at uh, Hamas uh, first all, uh, and uh, I saw there how the, uh, the uh, integrated planning, what effect it has. So that process, I think, will, will uh, happen. Igor, from the EC point of view, are you working, how are you supporting international collaboration? Well, intellectual property rights are something we're not able to really deal at the European level, so uh, let alone the global level, I guess this is even, uh, even more uh, difficult. Um, what I can see is uh, going on is that in many of the trade deals that the community is, that the bilateral trade deals that we have with the Chinese or the, the, the Indian, uh, or India, for example, the, I think the best way is to try to involve the partner in the project. Uh, we have many bilateral agreements now which involve the technical cooperation bit. For example, being building a zero emission energy plant in China is uh, one example of this. So I think getting the partner involved uh, and these IPR issues have, will have to be dealt with at the, uh, through, uh, let's say, the global institutions when, uh, or the global uh, solutions that we have, a G20 or the, or the World Intellectual Property Organization, because um, this, I mean, you have to get all the partners involved into a solution. Um, but that's my idea. Pat, as an investor, uh, international collaboration, I believe that you are focusing on investing in Europe. Yes. Uh, but in real, terms yeah. of, of non-Annex 1 or developing world countries, uh, is international cooperation something that you consider being part of or looking at or uh, in terms of investing, uh, syndicating, maybe to be able to uh, reach into these new emerging markets in the developing world? So we um, aspire that our companies will end up being global, will act, sort of play in global markets, and you know, increasingly that includes China and India and, and much of Asia and uh, other developing countries, South America, for instance, Africa. We have uh, not so much in clean tech, but we have a number of um, telecoms companies, for instance, that are very active in Africa, which is a booming market. Um, right now, I, th I think in terms of, so yes is the answer in the long run, in the short term, um, you know, we're dealing with small companies who have a lot going on, very limited bandwidth, and generally the mantra is keep it simple and focus on the things that are really going to deliver, you know, results in the near term. So it's very easy to get, for companies to get lost heading off, even to the U.S. for that matter, from, from Europe, which is, uh, you know, much uh, better charted waters than, uh, than China and India. Um, so it's, it's a step that most VC-backed companies take with caution because the, the risk of failure is quite high. Um, as, as far as the sort of collaboration aspect of all this, um, there's a lot going on that does involve multiple parties and some of it is, is quite useful. Um, and I'm thinking about some of the smart grid projects that are, that are happening in Europe in terms of demoing various people's um, uh, technology and products, but again, there is a real risk in those that companies can have a lot of resources get consumed into sort of doing a 100,000 household smart grid project, uh, which doesn't actually end up in a big customer sale at the end of the day. Um, and it can take years for the decision making and, you know, it, it can really distract companies. So, um, 
you have to trade off the sort of um, almost PR aspect or, or relationship building aspects of those, and in some cases, the, the revenue with the just going after and finding a customer who really needs your product and just selling it to them. So yeah, I'd say it, it depends. So before we go to the last uh, C of the capital $160 billion uh, question, uh, prepare for yourself in, in the audience. If you have any questions, we might take them at the end, or you can decide if we're going to end as soon as possible and, and go for the, for the networking again. Uh, so the last question is uh, around the, the capital of, of uh, raising the funds if we, again, assume that there will be a strong uh, climate convention. Uh, including uh, maybe up to $160 billion uh, uh, in, in this uh, budget for funding this, which uh, about, it will be in, in three parts, and, and one third of them will be for mitigation, which is primarily what is going into maybe clean tech, but also in adaptation areas. So there will be a lot of money, but also the, uh, the question is, wh what will this mean for the, the, from the private side? Uh, will there be private capital to be, that can be allocated to, to leverage, as it always needs to, to leverage the public funds so that uh, the whole clean tech industry can um, uh, benefit from this uh, investment. So, Pat, from an investor point of view, what do you think will happen? Um, again, I don't, I don't know where the, exactly where the number comes from or what it's intended to be, but I'll, let me just to put it in context, say that the global venture capital industry is about $25 billion a year currently, maybe 30, somewhere in that range, of which clean tech is probably these days Where's Allison? She'll know the answer. I don't know, 20 to 30 percent, something like that. So you're talking a relatively small number. I, I think where the real bottleneck is, if you think about actually doing something about climate change in a time frame that's meaningful, the real bottleneck is in deployment of technologies that are basically shovel ready right now or will be pretty soon. And that, you know, if you look over the last couple of years and particularly in the last 12 months, that bottleneck has been in project finance where you need to take, um, you know, existing technologies that you know will work in a given situation, and you need to have the capacity, both financial and otherwise, to actually go out and, and implement those, whether it's uh, conservation or, or renewable energy generation or, or whatever else you might be doing. So um, I think that's a piece, actually, where government can potentially have a useful role in, because the, the sort of quantum of money that's being distributed is big enough that um, there may actually be capacity to distribute that. But I would say the, the focus ought to be more on deployment um, rather than on um, the early stage stuff because, you know, a couple extra billion dollars into venture capital per year would be sufficient to massively increase the, the amount of activity. And by the way, there's already a lot going on. So I think it's a very tricky question and, and kind of hard to, to address in the abstract, but I would, I would like to see it focus more on deployment rather than rather than technology development at this point, because I think that's being done reasonably well. Uh, Igor, what would you say uh, in terms for, for the funding agencies, uh, public funding agencies, uh, what this would, this would hopefully mean a lot more work from them to, uh, to distribute uh, funds, or will just be a great opportunity, or uh, will it be a difficult task? Um, obviously, well, um, in terms of uh, funding, it uh, all very much uh, depends on the way the, the national uh, governments are, of course, set up. What, again, at the, the European level, what has, and I think it's quite evident in the actions of the member states, where something we have, it's called the Environmental Technology Action Plan, the roadmaps for each member state, is that the funding so far has been really uh, co uh, uh, concentrated on the early stage. Uh, and uh, the demonstration uh, phases of of the innovation uh, of the innovation cycle, let's say, um, uh, and uh, we also have some tools that support that at at, inter at the European uh, level, which has which have proved to be quite successful, particularly the demonstration projects where we uh, finance finance the first application of a project. Uh, show that, let's say, that a developer shows the credibility of the technology to, uh, to potential investors that has proved to be quite successful and there's quite a good response rate to these projects. Um, however, uh, a lot of, I think, w what again has to be done, w what has been done as well at the, at the Commission, uh, the EC level, is 
uh, identifying the best practice and, net and spreading them between the member states. There, are, there is a policy network being set up now, actually targeting the specific issues uh, of funding agencies, identifying best practice in the member states, and then trying to implement them uh, as pilot projects in other countries, in other member states of the European Union, so that member states learn from each other and implement the best, uh, the best ideas.